Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. Now, a lot of people under my videos talk about the gladius or gladii, um, a gladii. I always have problems with the plural of that, but the gladius, the Roman short sword. And uh, the point that I really want to address is that a lot of people describe this as the, the sword that conquered an empire. Well, let's put that aside for a second. But first of all, the reason they're saying that is people are implying that shorter is better. Now, on my channel, um, I'm probably quite well known for um, uh, sort of bigging up and promoting longer weapons, um, saying, you know, basically the more length you've got, the better it is. Um, obviously within certain parameters, and there are certain things that change that, which I will get to in a minute. Um, and a lot of people when we're talking, so I've got a video which I think it's probably my most popular video I've ever done, long, long time ago, no editing whatsoever. Uh, in the early days I did a, what is the best sword to choose for a one-on-one -on -one fight? Um, in other words, what's the best sword? Which obviously a lot of people look up on the internet and a lot of people come at it with preconceptions and um, ideas based on maybe actual experience of using swords or uh, experience from movies or uh, you know video games or whatever. And uh, clearly, you know, there's a lot of people out there who think that katanas, uh, katanas are the best sword. Uh, some people think that rapiers are the best sword or spy-handers, long swords, um, whatever. Um, but a significant number of people are under the impression that the gladius hispaniensis, so the, the Roman short sword used for a large chunk of the, uh, of the Roman, of Roman history, of Roman military conquest, a lot of people are under the impression that this is somehow a superior sword by itself because the Roman Empire was great and the Roman military machine was great therefore the sword that they used must be equally great. But of course that's a sort of logical fallacy. It doesn't necessarily follow that uh, just because a, an empire or civilization, a culture are particularly good militarily that everything they do and everything they have is great. Uh, there are many, many, well, every basically uh, military culture and, and civilization in history has done some things well, some things good enough, in fact, probably most things good enough, and some things badly. There were some things the Romans were not very good at, and there were many, many things that the Romans were just kind of average at, and there were some things that they were excellent at. But they're swords. So, first of all, let's just look. So, the model I'm holding here is a Mainz Gladius um, replica made by Dynasty Forge. And I'll put a link below uh, to this product if you're interested in getting such a thing. I haven't yet done my review of this. If you start looking for that, where's the review? Where's the review? I haven't done that, but the review is coming as any regular viewers of this channel will know. Um, I've been moving house, hence I don't have a wall of swords behind me. Um, I'm in the process of, uh, of um, establishing myself in this new house. So there will be a wall of swords, trust me. It actually probably won't be this wall. It'll be that wall over there that you can't see. And it will be a bigger wall of swords than I had before because I've got a bigger study and I've got various other fil filming environments. But back to the sword. The Mainz Gladius is characterized by this slight flare. I've just put the scabbard down because it's quite jangly, although it is rather nice looking scabbard, but um, makes a lot of background noise. Um, so the Mainz Gladius, you'll notice it's sort of wasted and flares out here. Now, a lot of people describe this sword as a dedicated thruster. I'll I have spoken about that in previous videos and I will talk more about that uh, in, in the future when probably actually doing the review I do of this sort. But just to say that is a misconception and that this is a cut and thrust sword. As you can see from its width um, and anyone who's ever held one of these will know that these are fearsome choppers. Okay, They can chop very, very well. However, they do have a very pointy point, and in fact, some of the surviving examples, uh, there's one in the ta uh, Royal Armouries in, in Leeds, um, it has a reinforced point, a bit like a medieval rondel dagger, for piercing, who knows what, for piercing types of armour, probably male uh, predominantly, but maybe also, I don't know, other things, uh, layered, layered of, layers of clothes and, and sort of um, things that might be worn instead of male. Um, Probably not for punching through things like lorica segmentata, actual plate armour, um, but punching through other things. But so it is a cut and thrust sword. Is it 
functionally superior to other swords of the same period? Well, the first thing we have to say is that this, in its sort of purest form, came from, at least theoretically, Spain, hence the name, the Gladius Hispaniensis. So the, the sword from Spain. Gladius just means sword. Um, the Romans kind of had several words, uh, Latin has several words for sword, there's ensis, there's sparta, um, and, uh, but generally speaking the gladius hispaniensis was the short sword as you see here. Uh, and it comes in various different forms, some have parallel edges, some are shorter, some are longer, some are broader. Um, some are less pointy, some are more pointy. This is the Mainz version, which I have to say I think is one of the best looking versions. And they are characterized usually by having not very much of a hand guard. You could say that that's not really a hand guard so much as something to prevent your hand from um, riding up onto the hilt, as, uh, onto the blade rather, off the hilt. Um, and they tend to have, but don't always, they tend to have a sort of spherical pommel. Um, they can sometimes have smaller ones, sometimes bigger ones, sometimes flatter ones, uh, and sometimes uh, a pommel which takes another form like an animal's head, like an eagle's head, or something like this, but they're rarer. Um, so generally speaking, this is a short-ish sword, but don't be fooled, it's not that short. By the standards of the day, um, if you look at Bronze Age swords, for example, a lot of Bronze Age swords are a similar size to this, maybe sometimes a little bit longer, sometimes quite a bit longer. And it is true that in the Iron Age, swords did tend to get longer. So if we look at uh, Germanic and Celtic Iron Age swords, they do tend to be um, about that long. So they do tend to be longer than this. So this is shorter. But is it a great sword? Well, the point I'm working around to is that fundamentally, this is part of a weapon set. Okay, when we're talking about what's the best sword, and in that video I did all those years ago, I'm considering just a single sword. If you can have a fight with all opponents, uh, if you've ever seen the movie Ring of Steel, something like that, you're fighting in a pit, one against man one, mano a mano, uh, with one sword, no companion weapons at all, is a gladius a good choice? And fundamentally, the answer is. No, okay? It's severely lacking. That's not to say that you wouldn't stand a chance. It is comparable with lots of other short to medium length swords, okay? Um, it's, uh, but it doesn't, have, it doesn't have a complex handguard, which is fine. You wouldn't expect that for that period because of something I'm working around to in a second, and many of you will already know the answer. Um, but it is a cut and thrust sword, but you have a severe reach disadvantage. Now, I mentioned way back at the beginning of this video, or near it, that there are a few things that change that longer is better ethos, okay? And whilst there are many things, for example, if you're fighting in enclosed spaces, if you're fighting in jungle, blah, 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 there are lots of contextual things. There are two major things to do with the weapons that we're using, which change the longer is better mentality. Number one, armor. If you have heavy armor, then it doesn't necessarily matter if you've got a longer weapon because your ability to take out another person with a sword is severely impeded, okay? People in heavy armor are very difficult to defeat with things like swords. So therefore, they can take multiple hits as they close in. In other words, they can come to close range, very close range, grappling range, wrestling range. They can come to that distance whilst being hit by swords and not being injured. So armor drastically changes the context, okay? So a, a rapier in a, a fight between two fully armored knights is a rubbish weapon, okay? Um, because one of the knights will just charge in with a little rondel dagger, grapple the person with the rapier, doesn't matter, the person with the rapier might thrust them several times and it will glance off their armor or stop on their armor, do nothing at all, and the person with the rondel dagger will charge in, grapple, and shank, shank, shank. Okay, so you can see this could be useful in that context as well. Um, and the other major factor which changes longer is better is shields. Okay, now 
I unfortunately at the moment do not own a Roman Scutum, but I do own a few other Bost Grip shields. Now, um, not all, but most early civilizations, so ancient world, in other words, classical period, uh, Roman era, for example, um, period shields are Bost Gripped. That is, they are gripped in a Bost with a handle. Okay, um, so that's the only reason I picked this one, but this obviously is a Viking era shield. As soon as you bring shields into a fight, it changes the longer is better mentality for a similar reason, very similar reason, to armor. It means that you're able to cover yourself as you close in distance. It becomes much, much harder to hit your opponent. And that's why if I redid that video I did all those years ago saying, which is the best sword? If the question was, which is the best uh, sword in one-on-one -on -one fights where shields are being used? The answer would be entirely different, and the correct answer is probably not rapier. Maybe I'll do that video. Um, if you want me to do that video, comment below and I'll start having a think about it and start planning. But fundamentally, the presence of shields, and uh, well, I'll come back to that point in a minute, the presence of shields utterly changes what the appropriate sword is. And in this context, where a shield's being used, and noticed boss grip shields, uh, whether they're very big and cover a lot of the body, or whether you hold them far away from the body, and they cover a lot of you by being far away from you, you see in the camera, if you look in the camera there, as I move it further away from me and further towards you, it covers more and more of my body. Makes it's very difficult for you to get to my legs, for example, uh, which is something that a longer sword, a long sword, has an advantage in doing. Um, and I can cover more of myself with my angulation and with my shield. So being able to do that completely changes the nature of the fight. So the gladius, my basic point that I want to make here, and I'll come back to uh, the shield matter in a second. My basic point that I want to make is that the gladius by itself is not a very good sword. It's not a terrible sword, but it's not a very good sword. It would be hopelessly, hopelessly outmatched against things like sabers, rapiers, long swords, obviously Zweihanders, um, any, any sword that was basically designed to be used by itself will, surprise, surprise, be better at being used by itself. A gladius is not designed to be used by itself, and that's where we come back to the next point. The next point being, you need a shield with a gladius. So to sum up, the gladius is a perfectly good sword when it's used within the context in which it was used and designed to be used and uh, and intended to be used and, and that was with a freaking big shield. Uh, you can use it with smaller shields and they were used in a gladiatorial context sometimes with smaller shields more akin to this but generally speaking in, in warfare the use of the gladius is inextricably linked to the use of the scutum or large curved um, shield which covers a large amount of the Roman soldier's body, basically from their knee up to their chin. Um, there's different degrees of curvature, there's different styles of shield, some are bigger, some are smaller. Officers and certain types of auxiliaries did sometimes carry boss gripped oval shields which were smaller, but nevertheless these are all fairly large shields and indeed those auxiliaries sometimes carried longer swords, they carried the spatha. Um, so fundamentally, if you're going to use a gladius, don't use it by itself. Now, it's not to say it's, uh, once again, it's not to say it's absolutely hopeless by itself, but it's not how it's intended to be used. It's intended to be used with a big shield, preferably, or with a shield at least. And in that context, it is a good sword. And finally, just to remind you that in the ancient world, so we're talking about Bronze Age, Iron Age, right the way through to the classical period, Greek and Roman, Macedonian, Egyptian, um, Babylonian, all of those civilizations from the ancient world used, predominantly used weapons with shields. Okay, so in the ancient period, right the way up really to really quite late in, in human history, um, quite late in the Middle Ages and the Renaissance, the shield was the absolute dominant defining factor in most warfare for most combatants. And in that context, absolutely the gladius makes sense. And I will do a future video uh, when I eventually lay my hands on a scutum, and I do have plans to do so. Um, 
and I have trained with Scootins before, before I should mention, but they weren't mine, but I had the use of them quite a long period of time. But um, when you're using the Scootum, the Gladius makes all kinds of sense in its design, both the hilt design and the blade design, when it's coupled with the Scutum and against other opponents who are using predominantly large shields. And in that context, the Gladius is a fantastic sword. So, surprise, surprise for a Matt Easton video, it all comes down to context, that's right. And within its own context, yes, the Gladius is a fantastic sword, but in fights between uh, individuals with single swords, not a very good sword. I hope that clears some things up. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and give this video a like um, if you even remotely liked it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Cheers folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers folks.